we know fundamentally education changes lives. And so I think we need to all be interested in education and quality schools in every neighborhood. We want uh, safe homes, good homes, good jobs, strong families, strong communities, and an opportunity to be the best in life that we can be. Los Angeles, California, a city in the grip of a crisis that's sweeping the nation. All power! All power! 17 year old Cindy Garcia is in the trenches. She's a senior at Fremont High School in South LA. It's almost entirely Latino, and 70% of the students don't graduate on time. I don't want to fall into the 70%. No, I, I know I deserve better than that. It's not going to be easy. Cindy is more than a semester behind, and there's just three months until graduation. What happened your ninth grade year? I, I, I guess I didn't find it important. Like, I didn't care. And Did you I, go? To school? Yeah. No, I would... I would you cut every day? Yeah. Every mostly. day? Uh, uh, kind of, yeah. Now she's trying to make up for lost time. But for Cindy, like the children of many Latino immigrants, family often trumps school. Cindy lives in this three-bedroom house with her mother, two sisters, baby brother, and a two-and-a-half-year-old niece. She's constantly pulled out of school to take care of the kids and help out at the family store, which barely makes ends meet. Check if there's some wine in the back, because I don't think so. Cindy also acts as a translator for her mother, Onelia, who speaks no English. She's been sick and needs help navigating doctor's appointments. Do you ever want to say to her, I need to be in school? Yeah, I do. And do you say that? No. No, why not? Because, because I'm the only one that can help her sometimes, you know? So um, I can't, I mean, if it was something else, like go to the store with me, then okay. But like, it, this is very important. So I can have to be there. It's a lot of responsibility, you're 17. I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Cindy's mother, Onelia, came here from Guatemala at age 15. Onelia resents her own mother for holding her back. Porque mi mamá es de las personas que creen que la mujer no estudia, solo los, los hombres. Because my grandma was the kind of person that believed that women shouldn't go to school, only men. I mean, you look at a kid like Cindy Garcia, and you see all the things that she's struggling with, and some of that is Latino culture. Right. Families need to survive. Latino culture is built around families, but I think it can be a strength as well. Who knows, here we're having the next superintendent, the next teachers, the next board member. Monica Garcia is the board president for the Los Angeles Unified School District. Your education is a priority for me. Your education, I'm working to get it to be a priority for California. It's the second largest school district in the nation overwhelmingly Latino, and it's in peril. An Education Week study found that half of its 700,000 students aren't graduating on time. Two students walk in the door. The odds are one's not going to make it. Yes, and that's what we're trying to fix. With Latinos on track to be the largest demographic of school-aged children by the year 2050, the high stakes aren't lost on Monica Garcia. The child in our classroom is not the ch same child that was there 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And I think more than that, our world is changing. And so the school system hasn't changed fast enough to meet the kids of today. <laughs> Latinos attend the country's most underfunded and overcrowded high schools. And Garfield, just across town from Cindy Garcia's school, is one of them. So this school was built to hold 1,500 students. That's right. How many does it hold now? 4,800 year-round, which means that at least 3,600 kids at one time. Three times the amount it was meant for. Yes. Yes. 
Latinos also attend schools with the highest poverty rates. Nearly half are learning English as a second language. And for many, like Cindy Garcia, working and supporting the family come before school. Steve lived here. Mr. Calleros lived there. And where did you live? Monica Garcia grew up just blocks from Garfield here in East L.A. The daughter of poor Mexican immigrants, she learned English as a second language. I lived here at 759 oh, that's Hofner. This, it's a two-bedroom house, uh, living room. Five very kids in a two-bedroom house. Yeah. Monica's parents stressed education. They scraped together money for Catholic school and sent Monica to college with the help of scholarships and grants. Education was her ticket out of poverty. I used to be poor. I'm not poor anymore. And so for children of poverty, education is that equalizer. And what we have to do is help children not have to choose, do I want to um, support my family or do I want to be in school? It's a tough choice that Cindy Garcia makes every day. She's nearly 40 credits behind. But teachers say she's bright and she's determined to graduate and someday become a social worker. So Cindy's in class from sun up to sundown. <sighs> Tired. And on weekends to make it happen. It starts at 8 with my first class and it ends at 8.30 with my last class. So it's basically a 12-hour day. Still, nobody believes that Cindy can graduate, including her mother. No sé, porque ella dice que sí, y a veces pienso que no. She says she doesn't know that I tell her yes, but that sometimes she doubts it. Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaragosa is convinced the future of the nation depends on whether the growing number of Latino kids, like Cindy Garcia, graduate. This is uh, the big civil rights issue of our time. So are the kids just failing, or is the system failing the kids? Uh, the system is failing the kids. The Mayor Villaragosa would know he was one of those kids. Why did you drop out? When I went to public school, it was the 1960s, they put me in shop classes and basic reading classes. I got turned off, and I just said, uh, I'm out of here. Thanks to a strong mother and a dedicated teacher, he got back on track. He went to college with the help of grants and loans, then on to law school, and finally, the mayor's office. Is there hope for someone like Cindy Garcia? I have hope for Cindy Garcia. Uh, I believe in these kids. Because you did? because I did and because so many of us who have had to, to struggle have made it. Only in America does this story of success against all odds happen on the scale and scope that it happens here. But first, Cindy's got to pass her exams. It's the last day of finals and the pressure's on. It's nerve-wracking now. Now that I'm here, I'm kind of nervous. And even if she does pass, to graduate, Cindy will have to spend the next two months making up classes. It will come down to the wire. Villaragosa said something very interesting to me. He said, you know, there are not many places where you could have all the list of things that you and I have talked about in the past and still be a giant success. In America, that's very doable. Is that going to be your story? Yes. I'm not the kind of person that's just going to sit there and just watch life pass me by and not do anything about it. If I see that, that I don't like where I'm standing, I just move. Up next, Cindy hits a major roadblock. I'm mad at myself because I messed up. 